the last couple of years. It's been famous in natural history museums for a while now, but for more complex technical objects, it's kind of new, but still our work right now. And we used it for, uh, for our objects differing from just small wooden rods to full, full, uh, full scale airplanes. So uh, my project right now is actually uh, using this technology to Uh, to um, to CT scan our cipher collection. Uh, it's about 61 objects of our cipher collection. Cipher devices, uh, as you can see, at Enigma uh, used to cipher and decipher uh, messages for military or diplomatic or, or banking reasons, whatever. Um, it's a publicly funded project, and uh, its the main goal is to create these data sets, the CT data sets, to have a look. But to look inside objects which usually can't open some of them for conservation reasons or even the newer ones because they're rich destroyed and to uh, make this data and and uh, give it to researchers so this is uh, everything is open data so um, usable by everyone who's interested in it and we have a two-level approach so it's first thing is to research reasons but today i want to talk about more about the, the visualization approach because uh, what I'm thinking is that we use lots of these nice uh, CT data. We already have them, I've created them. But what we actually just see online right now, for example, uh, are pictures like this, like 2D pictures, uh, which uh, which kind of interesting, but we don't really see the advantage of technology from a, from a visual aspect, aspect. So for the, for the general public, it's it's looking nice, but you don't really get crest or the a nice idea of this key technology. And uh, yeah, this is just a small overview of the collection in this project. We're ranging from uh, chemical objects from the early parts, with maybe more notably in the World War II area, to uh, um, uh, electromechanical like Enigma, to the modern size objects so on the collection ranges to the 1990s, where you have just uh, uh, fully elect electronic devices. So obviously, the CT data varies a bit depending what, what kind of object you scan. And this is actually the pills facility uh, we use for the scanning. We have a project part. We don't have our own CT facility because it's super expensive. And this is the CT facility of the Carnival Institute in Fürth. It's next to Munich and front images in the north, I guess. And on the left, you see the facility. This uh, white big cube is the X-ray source. And uh, in the back, you see the very I part where the objects are in our case uh, five objects actually fit there and our airplane for example just stood on its own and the neat thing about technology obviously you can uh, you don't need to unpack the, ob the objects or uh, you can just need to pack because the, the x-ray doesn't care if you, if you use some small packaging and uh, some somewhere there is our enigma in the show a couple of times to have some repetition and uh, just before i show you the main part of the pictures just quick Quick overview of the of the technology. I'm going to keep it brief here. It's basically the same as X-ray technology. So you use uh, you, you use some kind of radiation to light to an object, like you know, your medical scans to my hand, for example, and um, different materials, the density, um, absorb the light the radiation to a different degree. And what you get is grayscale image where dense materials appear lighter and uh, thinner materials appear darker. So it's uh, it's actually a graduation part. So even air in this case is also a kind of material in a sense. So uh, what we don't get with technology, for example, is any kind of surface information, no color. Every, everything colorized in the pictures I show you today is artificial. So that's something that you can't do. It's, uh, for example, here, this is just what I talked about. Um, the visualization basically varies depending what you want to see. I have a small animation here. This is actually the Enigma, as you can obviously see. And what you see here is um, all the material. So this, this cube is the air. This is all the, uh, the area the scanning was uh, taken. If I play the animation, you're going to see this is now the, wood, the wooden case. Mm -hmm. And you see, you, you get this, it's a gradual thing. Now you're going to see a machine and also the screws inside the wooden case. And if I continue further, all the material will disappear. So it actually depends what I actually want to see. Am I interested in the wooden case? Am I interested in the in the, in the enigma and the outer part of the enigma or in the inside? So that's uh, something to keep in mind. Also, 
there is no not such one thing as a surface. You have to define this kind of surface, which is a very important step. Because, for example, again, uh, if on the surface, I'm just is the, the wooden case, fine. But then I have to use it on the screen scale to this kind of material. And if I'm not usually I'm not interested in the wooden case, uh, and, but in the machine itself. But then I might have the outside of the machine, but I want to look inside the machine. So these are things to keep in mind uh, that you have to use to prepare your data. So now I'm going to show you some some pictures and which we can use to research reason, but also again it's more about visualization here. Here this is one of the 2D images. So basically what you get uh, with the CT scan is lots of X-ray pictures in all directions, and the computer then uses this to make a 3D model out of it. So it's lots of big data, and this is once 2D slice in this. A cipher device that looks like a modern calculator. I guess you can see here the different ships. You see the, the battery in front up there. There's this uh, this bowl that actually, if you remove it, uh, you have to remove it to change the battery. And um, there is a mechanical switch, a switch so it, uh, it deletes the RAM. So it's kind of a security measurement. And you can see the, the ships, which actually all look kind of the same, but you can kind of uh, see by, by these pictures what kind of chip was used if you know that they they use two different chips in two different uh, areas of the uh, areas of this uh, machine. But obviously, you see it's a kind of not so interesting in this kind of case, and uh, you might not see too many things here. Um, so in, here's a more mechanical um, and cipher device a bit older, very famous actually. And now I'll show you the the uh, 3D volume um, um, and, uh, visualization. And what we did here, this is the, this is the, the C52 from Heigling um, with this optional keyboard. So the, the, the thing on top is the, the cipher device and the bottom this is the optional keyboard. You scan those two things together and then you can is kind of easily separate them, which is called segmentation. Uh, so segment the different parts so this is kind of neat because you don't have to scan it, you just scan it separately. Uh, but here again, uh, the, this is some kind of manual process. Segmentation is super easy if you have different and clearly defined materials. For example, I have like uh, metal and some kind of fruit. It's super easy. But here, the, obviously, it's all kind of the same metal-ish thing. So you need to do it manually, and this takes time. And the more time you you spend doing it to better the results. So this is kind of um, uh, a different matter, but a very important one. The next slide I'm going to show you another part of segmentation. Here are colorizers, one of our oldest cipher devices uh, from the 1990s, just uh, uh, completely uh, mechanical. And the colorizer, obviously, very weirdly, it may be a bit ugly, it depends what you're thinking about it. Um, but you can, as you can see, you can you can clearly define different areas, and you can make the the, 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 uh, the case transparent so to look inside, and you see I think it's six different parts segmented, and you can see basically where to run through. So this is kind of uh, uh, important if you want to show any kind of functionality later on. Here again, I did the same thing with this is the famous Enigma I showed you before the animation. Again, uh, different. Different parts are colorized differently, and ob obviously they are just random, nothing to do with the with the real life machine in a way. Uh, just use these kind of uh, not so pretty colors to to make clear that these are this all segmented parts on their own. Um, here I try to be a bit more realistic in a sense. This time on the right, the, the photo of our simplest device, actually not a real machine, but more like a, 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 a yeah cipher disk in a way. And the left is the CT scan. Again, this is a 3D uh, picture. And I try to imitate uh, what the object looks like. And the uh, main thing actually scanned this, uh, this object with a closed uh, lid. So I had to, I had to again, segment the lid and open it up. Um, and what, what you hear miss, what you see missing is actually uh, all the letters beside of this. That's because it's a uh, paper and it's so close to the air that the scanner doesn't really recognize it. So another disadvantage in a way. So uh, if you if I want to have <laughs> these kind of uh, letters again, 
I need to uh, add a layer in Blender or whatever to just redo it in this kind of sense. Uh, the only time you can read stuff uh, within CT data is if you have it uh, uh, engraved or stuff like that. So you need a, need a physical difference in height. So this is more just a, like a picture of two devices where we have the two devices of the same of the same kind for the same manufacturer uh, from this uh, first period in the 20s and later on started to sell these machines again in the 50s. And uh, this is just a CT, uh, so the view from the T3D CT scan, uh, a picture from the top. And it, you see, it looks kind of similar. You see on the bottom, the new machine, there are much more screws on this, it's called a cipher disk there. And what I did here was uh, we can use the data for an actual nominal comparison. So we, we just use both of these uh, data sets, put them onto each other. And then the color deviation shows you what parts differ from another. So this, this machine you actually see this object is a new machine and the color coding shows you where it deviates from the older machine. So the greener, the more similar it is and the more reddish or bluish, uh, the more it differs. So what stands out here is the pink part. This is because it's only in the newer version of the machine. It's, it hasn't been there in the old machine. So this is kind of a neat feature more for the scientific research in a way. Um, but what here is, here is very, very important here, we have a good surface determination. I talked about this before. Uh, the surface isn't defined in the scan per se. So you need to, for the overlapping, you need a good surface determination. This can be kind of tricky. The, uh, the programs do it pretty fine at first glance, but it really depends on the data set. So all of what good scanning and but also it's some question of the material and so now just how to utilize the ct data um, you can use these to make um, um to make surface meshes to use obj 3d models not surface models uh, to use in vr xr ar we we'll talked about this today or even gaming community uh, 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 video games whatever um, so this is kind of interesting because uh, you don't need a 3D scan, like a surface scan of the machine, if you have this data. But here again, it's all about the surface determination because the surface determination defines the, um, the surface mesh, which I guess makes sense. And um, for example, here we have uh, the, 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 the front part of the, of the rotor, these are the Ligma rotors. Um, and the, on the right, you see two rotors, these are, I guess, four. Um, it's basically you look inside the rotor and in the back um, to see it with this uh, kind of uh, gear thing. And you only see this in the bottom part of the rotor, on the last rotor, because it is a different material, the other three of them. So if I actually want to see all of them, my uh, my um, my CD that can be noisy because um, um, because uh, uh, then there's going to be noise from the from the surrounding for the air that are. So what I need to do to make it like perfectly surface mesh, I need to segment it again and define my surface determination on all the object and all the rotors differently. So the potential is here, but it's going to be again to act a, a really good um, result in it. Lots of work. Again. So and I talked to you about the visualization. So what we want to do is actually um, we just also want to show this kind of uh, CT data online if you will. So pictures are nice and videos are nice, but what I really want to do is that people get this excitement I got when I first manipulate the 3T data, uh, uh, scroll through the data myself and play around with it. And uh, there are very few web viewers actually because the data is huge. It's our, our data sets range from about 800 megabytes to 20 to 30 gigabytes as the size of the devices and the airplane actually has uh, uh, in the highest resolution available it's about a couple of terabytes and you need to load this in your ram no but i don't know who has a uh, terabytes full of ram i definitely don't and it's going to be more complicated to use to use it online so it's uh, it's not a uh, there are challenges uh, to, to display stuff online uh, there are a couple of solutions right here on the left. Uh, this, this blue musical instrument is uh, from Fraunhofer, we're working with. They, uh, 
they kind of reworking this uh, uh, viewer right now for our project, but the right is an open source viewer, morpho, morpho source, very interesting project. And uh, this is, uh, I guess, a snakehead actually. And <coughs> so there are options of which what you want to do is uh, show these kind of things uh, online so people, the general public can use this. So, and uh, I stop and end with this, uh, just uh, uh, and now at the end, I show you two animations um, of, of uh, objects we have, and obviously you can you can be here limitlessly because you can work with uh, the um, colorization or how you want to draw through the object and stuff like that. And I'll show you. Oh, sorry, it's just one. The Enigma again. You see this time not the air, but we start with the little. Oh, yes, sorry, sorry. Ah, yes. Uh, with the box and. This time the Enigma is colorized a bit more realistically, and then we slide through the to the machine. And again, we, here is the segment of rotor colorized reddish. We open it and look inside. We don't, we don't see the wiring because it's too close to for materialized to the air again. This is a kind of neat animation which you can show in video in a form of online or in a, in a media station. And again, I talked to you about the out of the airplane here. We get a Another animation we're going to use in the media station. It's not finished. It's just uh, one version. It's going to be too, too fast, but just to show you what you can actually see with the key scan, even if it's going to be a full app thing. The wings are amazing because actually the depths are going to be too big. Uh, this is the rocket engine, which was the first rocket uh, powered uh, um, app lane in the world, which is also segmented colorized, as you can see. Then you go in the cockpit and Just going into the artificial horizon this time and uh, focus on the gyroscope there. So the data have lots of potential visualizations, <laughs> um, but uh, there's lots of work, uh, work involved. And obviously, because we are technical museum, we focus right now more on the on the uh, the, uh, the technical parts. But everyone who's interested is uh, uh, free to use our data to maybe have a more artistic approach to it and research that in a way. So uh, to finish, just uh, uh, to, to wrap it up, uh, I think the technology has lots of uh, potential, but lots of difficulties. For example, it's very expensive. And the first thing, uh, there you need to, to put lots of work in it to, to manipulate the data in the way you want to. And um, but if you, if you do all the things that uh, very interesting for research purposes and also for recitation purposes. Thank you very much. Questions? Mm -hmm. I question. Mm -hmm. I know that, that uh, CD scans are used a lot in medicine. And if you look at that type of CD scanner and what you've been using, is there any relationship there? Well, yes, I, I skipped this part uh, kind of. Um, the medical CT scanners, they work a bit differently because they they use a much lower radiation source, which makes sense because you all want to live through it. Yourself, yeah. you know? <laughs> and basically because flesh and bones aren't that dense as uh, metal. Uh, in this specific project, and also obviously in our airplane, we need uh, very high radiation sources. And um, also in medical CT scanners, the X-ray source and detector move around you and in industrial CT scanners, the object which costs oh, nobody wants to move around. Mm -hmm. So these are the main differences. I guess you could argue for, for some small objects for like mesh system systems. You might use medical CT scanners. I'm not sure about them um, because they use the small more facilities. But so there are differences here in a way. Thank you. What about automatic detection of closed volumes instead of applying that information by hand and about uh, detecting straight surfaces hopefully so straight surfaces but, um, instead of pompy and irregular surfaces that are actually straight and flat okay but the scanning process is naturally a little noisy yeah. so flattening that noise out okay so the, to the first question there are actually research uh, projects going on right now about using machine learning to segment data sets uh, I think not this institute, but the sister institute 
And I know that the University in Degendorf, there's a German approach here, uh, does the same thing. So there, it's a work in progress, but I guess we're not there yet. Would be if you if you're on the level to make it completely um, uh, automatic by, by by machine learning, that would be a great step in the direction to to have like a full uh, digital reconstructions and animations and stuff like that. And the second part about the surface determination. So how it actually works? It's um, it's working on a sub voxel level. So uh, it's actually pretty good so far. Uh, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, so there's always going to be a kind of uh, noise there, depending on the resolution we're working with in a way. Uh, but it's actually doing a pretty good job. The thing is, um, uh, I don't know if I have my display yet, but uh, so sometimes uh, even same materials seem a bit different. <laughs> these are actually scanning artifacts. There are, uh, there are, there are these artifacts if you use a uh, high radiation and you, it's, it's uh, uh, getting uh, dense material like metal, on, and right next to this metal, there's the very thin material. Mm -hmm. You have uh, you have like a corona in a way. So this 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 really depends on the scanning process in a way. And um, the surface elevation works pretty well, but then again, what what is your surface? In the case of my unique my wooden case, and then there's this metal inside. But maybe I'm just not interested in. in the casing of the part, but inside. So really, just depends what you want to see. So in the end, to make it, if it's not working right away, you should second it again and just use these 